You're on. So yeah, this is a CNC. Um, it's a 3040, which means the bed is 30 millimeters, 300 by uh, 400. And there's not much videos on how to get this thing set up. So I'll just um, show you guys what to do. Like as you can see here, this is the um, control box. And all you have to do is when you get it, you just take these cables and they're labeled the X, Y axis and you wire it up. This is the controller board. And this has a parallel port in the back. You can see this uh, parallel port here. And um, the USB doesn't really work on this. Um, this comes by default with a Planet, a Planet CNC. You could. Uh, this comes by default. A um, it comes default with Planet CNC, and that's a you have to pay eighty dollars for it. It's a garbage software. So I'm going to show you how to install Linux CNC on this thing. So the first thing you're going to do, you're just going to run your parallel port to your computer, and one of the things is then in the Linux CNC operating system, what you're gonna do is you're gonna just go to CNC and you're gonna go step configure wizard. So then it, this is how you're gonna set it up. So then all you gotta do is just, just keep on going forward. And you could leave all this as default because we have a driver, which is the circuit board is a other. This is a knockoff, so this is all default. Um, you could test your jitter by just clicking here and you could just let this thing run for a minute and record the maximum value. This is just because this is a real-time operating system, um, so you, it, it needs to know that. So just you just record it down here. Um, then you just go forward. One of the things that's interesting about this CNC mill is um, if I always try to run it right here, well, actually, if I just went forward, um, if I just went forward and then... Um, try to run any of this right if I just skip through all this and try to test like it doesn't really work um, and the, it, it just like if you look at the CNC um, right now if you just look at it like you could it, it's not doing much and it's weird what what that means if that's a symptom and it makes noise what that symptom means is you have to go back into this and you have to click on invert the step you have to check that box and most likely it's going to be a problem with all of them so you just invert everything um, you could even invert these if you want but what then if you test the axis you could see now um, it works that was a problem I had my CNC I didn't really realize you had to invert the step and um, so then one of the things if you go to your CNC and you test the axis um, and you notice if I click on if, if actually if I go back and the x-axis and if I click on right and you could see the CNC is moving left you know that's a problem so what that means is you just have to go back into the CNC program and you just have to undo the inversion of the X actually all these but the steps you usually have to invert if you have trouble so then one of the things you have to do is you have to get all these values correct and in this CNC, um, this pulley to teeth ratio is actually, since this motor is directly connected to the shaft, it's, it's no gear ratio, no transmission. That ratio right over here is always going to be one to one. So you could just fill in one to one in there. And then the next ratio is a lead screw pitch. What I did is I just took a calipers and I, I just lifted this machine up and then if you get the underside and you just take a calipers and you measure out an inch on the calipers, right? You measure out an inch and then you just count with like a toothpick how many threads there is in one inch and that'll give you the lead screw pitch. And then for me, that was 13. So I'm just gonna tell it 13. And one of the things, then what you're gonna do is when you run this, these values you could all leave as default. And then when you test the axis and you click on the run, it's going to create a one inch area because it's half inch to the left and half inch to the right. And the thing is you don't know if it's accurate because the CNC might actually make a half inch area. Like the CNC is dumb. So the way you test and modify your CNC to make sure that it's accurate is if you click on the run command, 
Then what you do is you take a Sharpie and you just do this. So then now, if you zoom in, it's creating this mark. This Sharpie might be like dead. Yeah, it's pretty bad, this one. You just need to get it brand new. So then once you get a mark, you click on OK. Then you could just move it all the way out of the way. Then you take your calipers and you measure. Um, the Sharpies usually do a better job. This Sharpie somehow just died recently. I don't get it. But if you measure this, it's actually 0.52, this mark, 0.55. So then what you do in your calculator is you just take, um, this is one inch, and it's doing one, right, it's doing one divided by 0.55. The mark's only making a, a 0.55 of an inch. So then you just divide the numbers and you get 1.818. So then all you got to do is you just change your ratio to 1.818. But the ratio I know is correct. So I'm just going to change the micro steps per revolution. So I'm going to just take the 200 times 1.818 and you get around 363. Um, for mine, I actually, mine was best at 380 because I just confirmed it. So actually, if I just change that to 363 right now, and then I test the axis, um, the Sharpie way works okay, actually. If I just test that, and then I do a run, and then if I go back, there we go, the Sharpie's much better. So now, now we have a mark, then we just, uh, we could just cancel the run, and then jog it all the way out. And then now you could just measure and you get around, if I zero out this caliper, I have around exactly an inch. So um, that's how you do, then you do this to all three of your axes. So you have all three of these axes. We got this, this uh, X axis run this way. We got the um, Z axis up and down and the Y. You do that for all three of them with the Sharpie thing. And then um, that should be good enough you know, it'll keep your stuff close to accuracy. You'll probably, with the Sharpie thing, it's only accurate to around like a hundredth of an inch. And I'm sure the other ways to get it more accurate is just gonna be like a guess and check kind of thing. You're gonna have to put your router bit in there and then put it on a piece of wood or something. But this is just a good way to ballpark it just to get your CNC set up. And like I said, if you have uh, trouble with your CNC, when I plugged everything in, um, the motors would just hum, they wouldn't move. You have to invert the step. Um, you have to check that box off because that was um, freaking us out. And one last thing is this terminal. One of the things some users for the Linux CNC um, might need to know is the parallel port address. I didn't need to know that, but for what you're going to do to get your parallel port address to tell Linux CNC, you're going to run the command sudo lspv. You're going to type in your password. Then you just scroll all the way to the bottom to find, um, this is serial, that's a, that's, um, this is a AMD crap, yeah, good company, you know, good stocks. Um, AMD right here, um, parallel controller, you have this hexadecimal address, D10, and some people, like for me, I didn't need to do it, I kind of recognized it automatically, some people would just enter the, the D10, um, as a hexadecimal character. Some people need to do this, other people don't. For me, I didn't need to, and somehow this kind of messed it up, but if that stuff's not working, you could do that. And then if this command, you might get an error that says command not found, you have to run this sudo apt-get install because your operating system might not natively have it. Once you get that up and running, you know, all these things, like I said, you just, um, we fixed it right here. You just change the values to 383 or whatever we did with the calculator. You just keep on going forward. And then you could, this spindle thing is just garbage. You could, you know, this CNC, um, you set the spindle manually, really. I mean, you just set it through here, you know. So there's no reason for a Linux CNC to like, you know. It, I wouldn't worry too much about this because this is pulse width modulation. You might not have a proper board to do that, like, who cares? Um, and then all you gotta do is you just click on the done, 
And then now when you click on done, um, you get a saved configuration. Um, do you want to quit? So then once you click on this, you click on the execute. And then this is the access control. And this is where you're going to load your G code in and then tell it to do crap. And then um, just th this machine always comes in default. It shuts it down. So you have to click on the X button because it's, it's grayed out and then you can't do anything. It's kind of annoying. You have to click on these two buttons and then now, now you could just, um, you know, you could just move this thing around, you know. So that's, that's kind of how that works. Um, yeah. So hopefully that helps out with the Linux CNC, just getting it set up. And um, like I said, there's no instructions on the web. It's like pretty terrible, no documentation. So hopefully this uh, helps out.